thank you guys very much for that. How many of you guys would like to go to heaven? Hundred dollars, please. <laughs> you laugh. But you know what? That was the message of the church at the time of Martin Luther. Today we're celebrating Reformation Day, a time when Martin Luther and a lot of other brave men and women stood up for the truth of the Bible. Because at that time, it had really gotten lost. The church had kind of lost its way. It had started following traditions. It had started making up new rules. And one of the things that was really, really wrong was they said, in order to get to heaven, you have to pay money to the church. And you have to do things, and you have to pay for your own sin. Now, how many of you guys think you could afford it if you had to pay for your own sin? Thank you for being honest, yeah. <laughs> not one of us could. Because it's not just a couple things that we do here and there. We confess what the Bible tells us, that we are sinful to the core. We are by nature sinful and unclean. And so if we had to pay it off ourselves, we could work for the rest of our lives and still owe God. And so Luther came along and that bothered him. And so he read the Bible, which is a very good thing to do. And in the Bible, he noticed something very interesting. He noticed that it's not up to us to pay for our sin. Who did he realize has paid for our sin? Jesus did. Now we know that. And we talk about that, and you guys know that, and you've learned that from a very young age. But could you imagine not knowing that and thinking that it was up to you and then for the very first time hearing that Jesus has paid for all of your sins completely how do you think you would feel probably happier than that because you would find out it was by grace you were saved completely because how many of your sins did Jesus die for all of them. And that's the truth of the Reformation. That's the truth of God's word from the very beginning that the church had lost. And so the reformers came and they weren't making a new religion. They weren't trying to break away from the church. They said, we need to get back to the word of God because the word of God gives us the gospel that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that paid for every single one of our sins, every wrongdoing. And when we look to him in faith, there's nothing left for us to do. There's no more money left for us to pay. There's no more sacrifices for us to make because Jesus has done it all. And so we celebrate Reformation Day every year because we rejoice that that timeless message of Jesus still stands today, that God renewed and reformed the church and brought that message back to the forefront so that we don't have to live in guilt and terror of God wondering if there's one that we forgot about, but we can live in eternal joy knowing that Jesus took away the guilt of all of our sin. So thank you guys for helping us celebrate with the Reformation polka and with Rise and Shine and all the songs that we sing to sing out that glorious gospel that Jesus has forgiven us. So thank you. You guys can head back to your seats. And we do indeed rejoice that Jesus Christ has paid our penalty in full and that today he comes to us in his body and blood and proclaims to us that eternal forgiveness that he has won for us on his cross and his empty tomb. This morning he comes to us through both word and sacrament using the words of divine service setting three as printed in the bulletin and we rise to make our beginning. And as we gather together in the presence of the one true and triune God, we look to our baptism, where God himself called us by name, washed us clean of all of our guilt, and declared that we are his own dear beloved children. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father 
beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. <laughs> Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto each of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Come, O children, listen to me. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for this Reformation Sunday, which serves as the text for our sermon this morning, comes from the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. And this is the word of the Lord. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers. Consider well her ramparts, go through her cities. That you may tell the next generation The epistle reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the third chapter. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. And this is the word of the Lord. Rise and sing the Alleluia. And the Holy Gospel comes to us according to St. John, the 8th chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, You will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The Son remains forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And this is the Gospel of our Lord. Let us confess together our God-given Christian faith as we speak the words of the Nicene Creed as printed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, 
light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. I'm Pastor Redditch, and I approve this message. Vote for me, and I'll fix all your problems. I promise you that I will fight for you, that I'll make this nation great again. If you vote for me, I will increase your take-home pay, lower your taxes, and cure gout. 
I pledge that I will stand up to political insiders, lobbyists, big corporations, foreign powers, and anyone else that you might despise. I promise to improve your health care while lowering your premiums, to raise your wages while lowering your stress, to give you free college, free pills, and free trips to Disneyland. Disneyland, not world. Let's not get crazy here. I promise to secure our borders while also welcoming all who wish to enter. I promise to cut spending but also increase all benefits everywhere. I will fix our broken system. I will rebuild our economy. I will restore your faith in government. I guarantee you that I will bring honesty, transparency, conservatism, liberalism, truth, justice, and the American way back to this office. I will not rest until every wrong has been righted, every bank account is full, and every single citizen is happy. But above all else, I promise you this, I will not keep my promises. <laughs> wouldn't it be great if politicians were actually that honest? And wouldn't it be nice if they actually had the power and the ability to do the things that they promise? Because it all really does sound good, doesn't it? People get elected because they know that this world is broken, that things are wrong, and that people are in some dire situations. Not one political ad ever promises, I will keep things exactly the same way they are right now. People want change. People want things to be different. People want a savior, someone who can make their life better, fix everything that's broken, make right everything that's wrong in our lives. I want that. You want that. We all want that. So the question is, who's going to do that for you? Who's going to save you? Well, maybe you're convinced that there is one candidate, one politician, who has all the answers, the one person that's going to fix the whole system who will make everything perfect if only they get elected to office. Not just the president, but maybe a hardworking senator, a grassroots state representative, maybe even a local city council person. Someone that knows what's wrong, has a clear vision that you totally agree with, and they will get it done. You know that they've got great ideas, and if they could just get enough votes, just get into a position of power, they could fix it all. Or maybe it's not just one candidate. If only your party could have real control of Washington, and there wasn't all this back and forth and bickering and fighting, well, then things would get done and everything would be better. Or maybe if a reasonable third party would emerge from the muck and the mire and rise up and give a real voice to the people, that's what's going to save us. Or if maybe the whole system would just collapse in on itself and we could just start from scratch, that will be our savior. Or maybe you realize that it's not about politics, that it's about the people in your life, the people around you. Maybe you're banking on family and friends to show you through the hard times, to give you all the help that you need to fix the problems in your life. If they would just give you a little more money, if they would just give you a little more support, if they would just give you a little more this or a little less of that, then everything would turn around in your life, everything would be great if only someone would step up and give you what you need and what you deserve. Or perhaps you think that it's up to you to save yourself. You don't need to rely on anyone else. You just need to kick it into gear and start bettering your own situation. Next year, you're going to exercise more. You're going to spend more time with family. You're going to be more responsible with money, and you're finally going to start writing that book of haikus you've been putting off. All it takes is a little motivation, a little getting gear type stuff, and you can fix your life yourself. So, who is it going to be? Who is going to save you? Who is going to fix your broken life and make everything better for you? Is it a candidate? Is it a political party? 
Is it your family or your friends? Is it yourself? Is it the lottery, your pastor, your long-lost uncle? Who is going to step up and save you from all the pain and disaster and heartache and calamity of this world? Because someone has got to do it. Listen to the words of the 146th Psalm. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the Reformation. The church in the 1500s, it had gone down a terrible road. And it had been traveling that road steadfastly for quite a while. Who got them to that point of paying for heaven and buying indulgences and saying that we had to work off our own sin? Who got them there? People did. People that other people trusted. People that made lots of really great promises. People who other people thought would save them and give them the way that they needed. The pastors who didn't do their duties. The people who didn't care. The church leaders who were more interested in personal power and riches than they were about the pure word of God. Yes, there were faithful men and women all throughout. People who hadn't turned away from the truth of God's word. But on the whole, the church had gone off the rails with false doctrine and hideous teaching. Selling indulgences. Thinking that salvation comes through our works not knowing or even teaching the word of God, but relying on the traditions of man. It was a mess, and it needed to be fixed. The church needed saving. And who came along to do it? Some would say that it was Martin Luther, who boldly spoke the pure word of God once again. Martin Luther, who saw the corruption and heresy that had filled the church and boldly nailed his 95 theses to the door of the church. Martin Luther, who stood before the church council and said at the risk of his own life, here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God. Martin Luther, who risked everything to stand up to those in power and demand that God's people be set free from the tyranny that corrupted the church, in many people's eyes, Martin Luther was the savior of the church. That he was the one who rallied all the other reformers. That he was the one who emboldened the people. That he set free the gospel of Jesus Christ once more. And certainly, the work that Luther did was important. And we give thanks to God for that work. But I do need to tell you something here. It wasn't Martin Luther who saved the church. For all the great things that he did, he was not perfect. He was a guy. He was a sinner, just like you and me. He had some wrong ideas about things. He wasn't always right. He did and said some awful things from time to time. And then do you know what he did? He died. It's true. He died. After all that he had done, after years of faithfully championing God's word, he laid down and died. And all those people who had put their faith in him, who were counting on Martin Luther to save them, they were shocked and they were terrified and they were floundering and they were lost. They didn't know what to do. In fact, the whole thing almost fell apart. Churches turned on one another. Christians took up arms against one another. Accusations of heresy and false doctrine flew every which way. Because too many people had put their faith in Martin Luther, and now he wasn't around anymore. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Don't count on the government to make or break your life, depending on who gets elected. Trust your family, but know that they're mortal and flawed sinners, just like you are. 
Don't let your faith live or die on how much you like any particular pastor because we are bound to disappoint you. No matter how much someone might promise, no matter how great they might be, no matter how much they have done for you in the past, nobody is perfect, nobody will be here forever, and nobody will be able to truly save you. Nobody, that is, except for God. Listen again to our reading from Revelation. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. The angel's message, it wasn't about great people. It wasn't about likable preachers or powerful defenders of the faith. It is about God himself, about his word, about his deeds. It is about God Almighty who created all things, who rules over all things, who is eternal, almighty, omnipresent, holy, and perfect. The message that the angel proclaims to all people, to every nation and tribe and language, it's all about God and God alone. People will come and go. People will say one thing and do another. People will always let you down. But God won't. He never has and he never will. His love endures forever. His mercy endures forever. He himself endures forever. God doesn't just promise to save you. God already has saved you. The Reformation, it wasn't about Martin Luther. It wasn't about arguments. It wasn't about who should have what power in the church. The Reformation was all about Jesus. Because he alone can save us from sin. He alone has given his life as a ransom for us. Jesus didn't just mount a good campaign and make a bunch of fancy promises and then say, now you all take it from here and the movement can never be stopped. Jesus Christ gave everything to save you from sin and death and hell. He humbled himself to be born into this world of a virgin. He faced all the same temptations and pain and suffering that we ourselves face on a daily basis. He allowed himself to be betrayed, falsely tried, and sentenced to death. He willingly laid down his life in torturous pain and agony, nailed to the cross to save you. Not just to set a good example of how to suffer righteously, but to pay the eternal price of your wretched sin, to cleanse you by his innocent and holy blood willingly poured out and sacrificed for you, to take your place underneath your sin and to suffer the hell and torment that should have been yours for all eternity. There on the cross, Jesus Christ gave up everything to set you free from sin and death and hell. But even death could not hold him in. And on the third day as he rose again from the grave, he did so to give you not just hope, but the absolute guarantee that everyone who looks to him in faith will likewise rise again to eternal life. Jesus alone is the way to heaven. And he has made that way free and open to all those who hear his word and believe. That's the good news of justification by grace through faith that the reformers literally risked their lives to share with the whole world. And still today, that's the good news that we continue to proclaim. Still today, it's about Jesus and his word, his love, his cross, his empty tomb. The slogan that the Missouri Synod adopted for the 500th anniversary of the Reformation was, it's still all about Jesus. And still today, that is true. It always has been, and it always will be, about Jesus. Jesus is the one who saved the church in Luther's day, setting free his gracious message of the gospel after years of bondage. 
And he's the one who still proclaims that precious word today. Jesus is the one who leads and guides our nation through good times and bad, chastising us when we need it, blessing us and keeping us safe, even though we don't deserve it one bit. Jesus leads each of us through the dark times of our lives, giving us not empty promises that are bound to be broken, but true love, true caring, true and unshakable promises of life eternal with him. Through it all, even though we don't deserve any of it, Jesus graciously saves us from sin and death and the devil. Put your faith in God, not in people. On Election Day, it's not about Democrat or Republican. It's all about Jesus. In your life, it's not about those who help you or even your own can-do attitude. It's all about Jesus. In anything that you do, no matter who or where you are, it's still all about Jesus. Just like it always has been. Just like it always will be. People will fail you. Jesus will not. People will hurt you. Jesus will not. People will leave you. Jesus will not. He alone has the power to love you for all eternity, and he does that. He alone has the power to save you from sin, death, and the devil, and he has done just that. He alone has promised to never leave you or forsake you, and he has indeed been with you every step of the way, guiding you, leading you, protecting you, forgiving you, and he always will be. Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and the springs of water. Put not your trust in princes, reformers, politicians, pastors, celebrities, family, friends, yourself, or anyone, for they will fail you. Put your faith in God and know that that faith is well-founded. For he has given you his word, his glorious gospel for all who dwell on earth, for every nation and tribe and language and people. And that gospel is, was, and always will be this simple yet glorious proclamation by which we have absolute guarantee of everlasting life. In the cross of Jesus Christ alone, in his empty tomb alone, you are forgiven of every one of your sins, and eternal life in heaven is yours. To God alone be all glory, now and forever. Amen. And now that peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. <coughs>
Lord, in your mercy. Lord, make us truly your disciples. Keep us in your word, free from all errors, and make our homes and families peaceful. Preserve all fathers and mothers and encourage them for their godly task, that children would be brought up in the fear and instruction of the Lord. Bless Marty and Jeannie, David and Jane, Kale and Lisa, and all couples celebrating anniversaries this week, and keep them in your almighty hands. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy on our nation. Give us good and faithful rulers who will govern after your good pleasure. Grant that each of us would be good citizens of this land and not take for granted the bountiful blessings we have each day. Give us comfort and a right understanding of your rule in this world, that we would not be deceived to think earthly powers will last forever, but have confidence in you alone. Your kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy. In the waters of baptism, O Lord, you claimed us as your own, working faith in our sinful hearts and cleansing us of our guilt. Bless all who celebrate their baptisms this week, including Dwight, Molly, Steve, Brett, and Joellen. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, do not let your people fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Rescue all people in any need of body, mind, or spirit, especially Joy, Randy, Donna, Robert, and all those we name in our hearts. Comfort them with the promise that you are with them and that all things happen according to your fatherly will. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Father, you have granted us the privilege of a place at Christ's table. Give us faithful and repentant hearts by your Spirit that we would receive worthily your Son's body and blood and depart to bear his fruit in lives of holiness and humble service. Bless your church through the forgiveness of sins, that we would have a clear conscience before you and live at peace with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us by your word out of the darkness of error and into the light of your grace. Mercifully help us to walk in that light. Guard us from error and false doctrine and grant that we would not become ungrateful and despise your word, but receive it with all our heart, conduct our lives according to it, and put our trust in your grace. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
again a welcome to all of you. And what a joy it is to gather together in God's presence. To know that it is not by our works that we are saved, for they would always be insufficient. But to hear that glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ that reigns for all eternity. That through his cross and empty tomb, all those who look to him in faith have not just hope, but the guarantee of everlasting life in heaven with him. God's richest blessings to each and every one of you in the rest of your week. And may he bring you back safely to his holy house in the days and weeks to come.